Hi, this is Mrs. Williams, readings chapter 31 and 32 of Masterpiece. 31, Breaking and Entering. James walked much more quickly than Marvin had expected, covering the dozen blocks to the apartment on East 74th Street in long strides. When they got to the large front stoop, he hesitated, shivering, as he scanned the metal panel of apartment numbers and buzzers. It had started to snow lightly, wet flakes dusting the sidewalk. What should I do? Push the button? he asked Marvin. Marvin crawled to the tip of his finger, but with no particular enthusiasm. He knew the apartment was empty. Let's see. 5D, James said as he read the label again. Perry, here it is. He pressed. There was no response. James bounced on his sneakers. He looked up at the tall front of the building, blinking away snowflakes. Then he shrugged. I guess we have to find a way inside, huh? Somebody must be home in one of these places. He dragged his finger over the double row of buttons, hitting every one. The intercom crackled with multiple voices sputtering, yes, and who is it? Until someone indifferently pressed the release button and the front door buzzed. Quickly, James turned the handle and pushed his way into the small tiled lobby. They rode the elevator to the fifth floor, with Marvin trying to think of how to get into the apartment. He could certainly crawl under the door, but that wouldn't help James. Once in inside, he supposed he might be able to set off the fire alarm. Uncle Albert, the electrical whiz, had taught Marvin a few tricks. And if he, ex if he succeeded, the building super was sure to come and open the door for a look around. But how would James explain what he was doing there? James found the door marked with a brass plate showing 5D. He nervously, he looked nervously down the hallway. Okay, I guess I'll knock, he told Marvin. There better not be some criminal in here. He took a deep breath and tapped on the door. There was no answer. He looked down at Marvin. Now what do we do? Marvin ran to James' fingertip and waved his front legs at the door. I know, I know you want to get in, go inside, but how? James tried the door handle with both his hands. See, it's locked. Marvin, seeing his chance, crawled quickly onto the doorknob. The only thing he, he could think of doing was to try to spring the lock himself. He took a good, long look into the blackness of the keyhole, then plunged inside. Wait, what are you doing? James protested. The keyhole was dark and crowded with chunks of cold metal. Marvin could see the workings of the lock with perfect clarity, but he had no idea how to move the mechanism and unlock the door. Great Aunt Mildred, the family locksmith, had given several lectures to the relatives on exactly this topic, but Marvin hadn't realized he'd need the information so soon himself. The secret was some kind of leverage, as he recalled. Hey, James whispered into the keyhole, sending a warm blast of air rushing into the tiny space. Where are you, little guy? Marvin saw one of James' worried eyes appear in the opening. Are you trying to open it? Really? That would be so cool. Marvin pushed as hard as he could against the metal bolt, but it wouldn't budge. A minute later, James' breath swooshed into the keyhole again. Guess what? I have a paper clip in my pocket. Maybe that'll help. Hold on. Marvin heard him rustling, and a moment later, the curved wire end of a paper clip came thrusting into the keyhole. Marvin leapt out of the way right before it scoured him. Take it easy, he thought. Does that help? James whispered. Marvin considered the paper clip and the metal bar of the lock. He tried desperately to recall Great Aunt Mildred's instructions. He positioned the paper clip carefully against the mechanism of the lock, then turned himself around and pressed the back of his shell against the paper clip. Wedging his feet against the bar of the lock, he pushed as hard as he could. Nothing. He pushed again. Nothing. How's it going, James whispered. Maybe you aren't strong enough on your own. I'll try turning the paper clip, okay? Marvin repositioned the paper clip and pushed with all his might just as James began to twist it. Leverage. He heard the thunk, the dull thunk as the metal bar slid back. It's unlocked. James whispered in delight, opening the door. Marvin scrambled out of the keyhole and onto James's hand. A moment later, they were inside the apartment.
Chapter 32, A Revelation James closed the door soft, softly behind them. He flipped the light switch, surveying the small, tidy living room of the apartment. What is this place? he asked Marvin. Who's Gordon Perry? Who indeed? A friend of Denny's? An accomplice of the theft? Marvin had no idea. He moved the tip to the tip of James's finger and once again dangled his length, legs in the air. Where do you want to go now? James asked. He began to walk slowly around the living room. Using the technique they'd perfected earlier, Marvin guided James, with a few false stops and starts, to the closed door of the study. Okay, James said. In here? He opened the door and stepped inside.